on a mission to check out a small historic town located on the western side of Wisconsin, I decide to travel the scenic byway and catch a few sights along the way. Sometimes you just gotta stop and take in the scenery, you know? It seems in this day and age, in our haste to get somewhere, we often miss opportunities to stop and soak in the sights and sounds beyond the confines of our car's windshield. There she is, old miss, in all her glory. I think this is gonna have to be our last stop before our destination, otherwise we'll never get there. Oops, I lied. I stopped to check out this historical marker about Maiden Rock, which, if I'm not mistaken, must be this bluff right overhead. And according to the historical marker here, that bluff was involved in a very tragic story about a young Native American girl back in 1700. According to the story, she met her demise falling, or as it is believed, throwing herself off Maiden Rock. And all because of love. Apparently she was in love with somebody else. Her parents didn't approve for whatever reason, had somebody else that they wanted her to marry, forced her to marry that person, sent off the young man that she was in love with and after about an hour of being married or so she disappeared and I think you can figure out the rest. If you haven't figured out by now we're in an area of the state known as the Triflis region. Wait what the heck did I just see that right? Here let me zoom in on that. Exactly what I thought. Now that's a first. Lats, beer, being advertised outside a bar. I don't think I've seen that before. Getting back to what I was saying, this part of Wisconsin was bypassed by the glaciers, resulting in the huge limestone rock formations that we're seeing. And I've really never explored this part of the state until today. Hey sightseers, sightseeing Sally here. I finally made it to my destination and that's Alma, Wisconsin. Sandwiched between the bluffs overlooking the Mississippi, Alma has a population of just over 700 people. And while it's obvious there's plenty of action going on in this little town, the reason I brought you here is... In 1982, Alma was designated as a National Historic District, with over 200 some buildings being included in that designation. Not to mention, Alma has a unique design feature that you don't typically find in towns and cities across the United States, and that is stair-step streets. Yes, streets made of steps that obviously you can't drive on, but that's okay because I got my walking shoes on and we're gonna go check these stair-step streets out and see what historical buildings we can find here in Alma. Now, according to what I read online, there are 12 of these stair step streets with over 650 steps. That's a lot of steps. And I probably won't make all 650 steps, nor will I find all 200 historic buildings in the time that I have here in Alma. But I thought, why not check it out, get a feel for what's in this little town. Like I said, it's obviously quite booming with all the traffic, all the people coming through with it being on the Great River, uh, Great River Roadway, the National Great River Road, which runs, if you didn't know, from Lake Itasca State Park up in Minnesota all the way down to Venice, Louisiana. Because, of course, it follows along the Mississippi River about 3,000 miles. One of these days we'll have to take that route Nearing the top of Pine Street, we could see it leads us to a church. The remains of what used to be almost United Methodist Church, to be exact. And then behind the church, tucked in the trees, is this old building. Unfortunately, today I don't have any info as to what that building is, nor any info on the church. I had looked up on the internet to see if they had any kind of historical guide on the town and all I could determine is that I needed to stop in at the visitor center to pick up like a guide of a walking tour of the town 
and as luck would have it, the visitor center was closed. And then I tried the library, no luck there. Even tried going to City Hall, and that didn't pan out either. So today we're kind of just flying by the seat of our pants, totally blind. And not the way I like to be doing things these days, but how can you pass up the opportunity to see these buildings? I don't know. We just can't. So we're just going to wing it the best that we can. What I can tell you, though, is that Alma became an official village in 1868. And the first settlers to arrive came in 1848. It was two men, Victor Propes and John Wacker, I believe were the names. They came out here to cut wood for the steamboats that were running up and down the Mississippi. By the way, did anybody catch the name of the street behind me? Hopefully I don't have nightmares tonight. If I do, you know why. I just stopped here real quick to show you the roads, how they curve up and down this bluff. Can you imagine what that must be like in winter when it's all icy? I think it'd almost be more fun to just hop on a sled or a toboggan and just slide on down. Speaking of sliding on down, if I'm not careful, I have a feeling I'm going to go sliding on down on my keister. Anyways, getting back to the town's history, I do know that the town was originally called 12 Mile Bluff. And that's because there used to be a prominent rock formation that could be seen, believe it or not, 12 miles away at the mouth of the Chippewa River. Riverboat captains used that landmark as a guide until it fell. And for some reason, don't know why, the townsfolk decided to rename the town to its present name of Alma in, I think it was the mid to late 1850s, and it's named after. By the way, that's the other thing about Alma is that you can come here to watch the trains. Apparently there's like 30 different trains that come through each day. Where were we? Oh yeah, talking about the name change of the town. It was named after a battle that occurred in Russia, of all things. A battle that occurred between, I believe it was the English and the French versus the Russians. That battle took place during the Crimean War along the Alma River in September of 1854. How that connects to this little town, I don't know. I do know many of the early settlers came from Europe. If you know, leave it in the comments section below. Now another thing interesting about Alma is that unlike a lot of the other towns we've seen, the railroad came after the town sprung up. So instead of the railroad coming first, the railroad came after people came here for the town. And that's because of the old Mississippi out there. The river made it real easy to access these parts and immigrants were able to make their way up here before the railroad came to town. Now you would think, with Alma being on the river, that the first business or major industry to spring up in town would be something related to the river. But strangely, it was not. Got any guesses as to what you think it was? Here, I'll give you a hint. Give up? It was a brewery. Now the Alma Brewery is no longer in existence. It was raised back in, I think, 1924. And supposedly you can still find the cave that was used to age the beer somewhere along here. Unfortunately though, it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to find it today. The information I had gotten off the web had pointed to this as being the location, but it doesn't look like that's correct. Now I imagine beer making isn't too big of a surprise given that we are here in Wisconsin. However, there is one other industry that sprung up here in Alma that just totally blew my mind. That business, cigar making. Yep, they made cigars here in Alma, which you normally think cigars being made in Cuba, but no, it was being made, they were being rolled, cigars were being rolled up here in Wisconsin. Well, 
As much as I'd love to keep exploring Alma's stair-step streets and talking about its history, I'm thinking it's time I hit the road. It's starting to get a little chilly out here. It's starting to get dark and rainy. And so videoing the rest of the town just isn't in the cards today. Hope you enjoyed this little bit of a tour and discussion about the history of what makes Alma so unique and what I hope comes out of this is that it'll have piqued your interest enough that maybe you'll take a ride down the Great River Road and someday find yourself here in Alma. Until next time, this is Sightseeing Zap. Making my way out of Alma, decided to stop to show you this view and the Tell Church established in 1886. Like I said, sometimes you just gotta stop and enjoy the view.